Quintana has been there with us every step of the way. Now we don't just use it to do big, large-scale scenes. We use it to do little one-offs and amazing look dev. Not having Katana in a studio like ours is just not conceivable today. Spin has been around for almost 30 years and over 106 uh, feature films and 17 television series. A few years ago, we knew we needed to revamp our pipeline. This wasn't going to be just a tweak. We're having multiple productions in at any given time with different requirements and we needed a pipeline that was going to be able to support that and, and also grow and, and change. For us, one of the things that made a Katana so attractive was the node-based nature of it. Being able to create templates, build effectively custom mini pipelines within your main pipeline gave us the flexibility that we were looking for. We were one of the first, you know, small companies to adopt Katana. There was some concern about our ability to, you know, knit it together and get it working. The work required to set things up really was not that significant. And for our lighting artists, all of whom have used other procedural 3D packages, um, they took to it like a duck to water. One of the shows we're working on right now is The Expanse. And we worked on the first season, and that became extremely popular. Out of the success of that, there was going to be a lot more challenging work that came up in season two. We needed to come up with a procedural pipeline um, in which we were able to have maybe one or two lighters work on hundreds of shots. Working in Katana, one of the most attractive things is working with graph state variables. It allows us to set up one shot and then use all that work in multiple other shots um, with literally just the change of a switch. Any lighter within Katana can set that up very, very easily being able to handle a very large number of shots within one Katana file. Uh, from one scene file, they can light 10, 20, 100 shots. We've seen a, a tremendous increase in our productivity. One of the really great things about Katana is a deferred loading system. You never need a huge, huge environment to be open. Traditionally, when we were lighting and rendering out of Maya, there were real cases where we could take 40 minutes to load a scene file. Now the nice thing with Katana is it's never actually loaded into RAM unless you want to view a given piece of it. I think there is a common misconception that Katana is only used by large studios, the ILMs and Sony's, because they have a large number of TDs. And we're basically a medium-sized company. We deliver hundreds of shots. We work on 10 shows simultaneously. And that comes from using Katana. I actually really believe that Katana is a very, very good tool for especially a small-sized studio. Spin has always had a long history of choosing the right technology at the right time, which is probably why they've been around 30 years. And I think Katana is just one of those decisions. It was the best idea five years ago, and it still is today. Kubo and the Two Strings, it's a stop-motion hybrid film. Yeah, when I first read the script, I was slightly terrified. And then I was like, wow, we're going to be really busy. And I was thinking, well, they're going to, you know, we're going to try to do most of the practical. So I don't have to, I don't have to worry about too much of it. And then I started reading, I was like, well, how are they going to do that practical? The water definitely was a little bit of a panic, uh, just because we had never done water at that scale before. The choppy water, it was a real challenge, it was very stylized. It had these huge scoops in it. We had to figure out how are you gonna get these and also make it look like, you know, realistic water so that it was believable. We used a lot of practical rigging tests for the motion. And we wrote some displacement shaders to kind of help the, get the stylization into the water. The big wave was a whole nother set of challenges because it, was not really moving the same way as the choppy water. 
So we ended up solving that by just using a big piece of geometry that kind of had a little bit of simulation on top of it. And we used Mari's flow maps to control the textures for the big wave. Yeah, and that, and that helped let it really feel like it was kind of unique and stylized and it wasn't uh, just a, a big realistic wave. We used Katana to pull all of those elements together and render them. And we rendered tons of passes for the water. Again, we. All the water was composited in nuke, so all of these passes got brought back together in nuke. The rain system that we used was all built in nuke. And a lot of the final look of the film for the water, you know, came from nuke. We did some unique things in Katana to simplify the character pipeline by like giving all the characters names and having attributes drive everything, where we could basically type in the character's name and all it would find all of the character's texture files, it would find all of their shaders and attributes and hook everything up. So we were able to kind of go through the characters relatively quickly once we got one or two done, which allowed a team of, you know, three people to kind of bust through, four, you know, 40 some odd characters in a relatively short amount of time. We do out of the ordinary visual effects at Leica. We rely heavily on foundry tools to give us the flexibility to hit the stylization and the look and feel of our films. I'm amazed every day I go to work to see what other people are doing and that I'm a part of it. It's awesome. I love my job.